Tim Marker, action! <laughs> What's going on, Alamo City Movie Talk fans? I'm Ryan D, you can hold it, Ryan 680. Special guest with me. What's going on, man? Introduce yourself. <laughs> How's it going, guys? This is Lex once again joining you all for a uh, trailer reaction. But uh, life is good, man. Life is yeah. good. How's it uh, going over there, man? Well, I mean, Texas in general is getting crazy. We're back yeah. on back on lockdown, but I mean, I'm used to it already. Thankfully, yeah. work keeps going and uh, we get to adjust to these these crazy times yeah it, it it definitely is one of those things to where it's it's a crazy times and come to think of it i mean we've had a full year of 2020 already and we're only halfway through it it's that's the crazy part of it I mean, it's, it's enough events to have to have for the year <laughs> but yeah. we're gonna have continuing having them and we have that big election coming out this later this year so that's gonna be another heartbreaker and it's just like the less of two evils all over again but um enough about politics but let's get right to it man <laughs> uh let's get right to it man. um so knowing that what just happened last week you know the last two movies got changed the release date uh the release dates got changed um and you know the COVID 19 it changes every week i mean we're getting new updates new daily stuff that i would say every day typically as far as like um uh you know, states opening, states reopening, closing, you know, and whatnot, and theater chains saying, oh, we're opening. Oh, wait, we're not opening now. And the yeah. Carnival Cruise Line cruises that were supposed to be opening up last week on Monday, they said, oh, never mind, we're not opening up. We're actually canceling them all the way to October. I mean, so many things are changing. And um, now that we know Disney changed the release date, Wonder Brothers changed the release date. Those are the last two major blockbuster movies of the summer. Now there's no summer movies now the end of july the end of this month which is crazy it's july 1st man um yeah if we haven't said already happy fourth everybody that's out there hopefully everyone has a safe weekend even though a lot of stuff is closed even though you know hopefully everyone's staying safe happy fourth happy independence but uh i mean lex what do you think about this man i mean just so many uh, it's, it's just a lot of changes happened you know this year there's no summer movies blockbusters this is a weird year man i mean for yeah. movies it's I mean, yeah. it, it's crazy, man. Um, we've never seen anything like this when it comes to, you know, uh, pandemic, but also just like it, it's a world shaking thing. So yeah, impacts us. It, it impacts so many types of businesses, so many type of people. Yeah. But you know, from an entertainment standpoint, which you know during these tough times is probably what people are seeking for. Um, it's impacted you know greatly, and you know there's things that the movie industry hasn't been able to control and yeah. um it, it's it's very unpredictable like you said but uh it's just crazy to think like you know every every year at the close of the year i'm looking forward to what movies are coming out next year and like the other day i was uh uh what was i doing i think i think i was just out and about like safely but ju just like mm -hmm. around uh um, yeah, yeah i was thinking like by now I would have watched uh, Black Widow, Wonder Mulan, Woman. Wonder Woman. Yeah, I would have, I would have seen all those movies already. Yeah, had it not been now, that's first world problems, right? Like just thinking. Yeah. But of course, this is what this you know the 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 series is about, like what we we're talking about. But yeah, it's just it's just so crazy to think like I would have had all these experiences now, and and you can't. Yeah. Get you can't and we got to wait another i mean mulan we would have saw mulan i was probably saw mulan three times four times five times ten times i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah already yeah um and and it's and you know that's one of the movies that one of the disney movies i was actually really really looking forward to besides that one and soul that comes out later this year um yeah disney pixar which is another because i'm very i love music films and when i mean music films you know that thing you do which is i just got done showing that to my wife angela um, and so music, you know, whether it be like made up or, uh, um, or just any type of, you know, music film, you know, walk the line, any, any of those type of sort of movies, those are great. And I love them. They're huge influence on the, you know, on the media and everything a huge influence on the community, as far as like bringing those people back to life and getting those music back out there, even though that they have passed or they haven't, or in any case scenario, you know, a lot about David Ayer, right? <laughs> you know, his movies, right? David, yeah, Dave, David Ayer. Uh, I've been following some of his work for sure, and um, and then to my surprise, he's actually been involved in a lot more stuff that I recognize as a yeah. writer. So not just his directing work, but his directing work is what kind of put him on my map. Uh, yeah. 
for for the films that he makes. And the type of violence he's done, the type of film, I mean, that's we can name it off the bat. Everyone else, Training Day, like, I mean, dude, Training Day, King Kong ain't got all me, man. Like, it just we go back to that Ethan Hawke, Denzel's role. He got an Oscar for that role. I mean, dude, like that, that, yeah, that was awesome. Uh, End of Watch is one of my other favorite movies of him. I mean, dude, Michael Pena. I just, yeah, I, I love Michael Pena's character in, in there so much. Spoiler alert. I mean, he does die. <laughs> Sadly, it might, the Michael Pena way, it's weird. Every time I see Michael Pena in a movie, he usually dies. It's weird. I don't know why. I just, mm-hmm. For the most what, part, I think 90%. That, yeah, huh? What else have you seen him die on? Uh, What was that? Um, World Trade Center. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I never finished that movie. I Nicolas started. Cage with Nicolas Cage is in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he died in there. Just oh, sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, spoiler maybe, alert. Sorry about maybe, that. Maybe I did finish it. No, I, I think I did finish. It's it's just it's a. I don't want to say it's an old movie, but no, it's, no, no, yeah, it's an old movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we're it. getting there, brother. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't say it. Don't say it. Uh, but um, yeah. So uh, we know, you know, we know his style. We know his type of film, and to know that, I know you mentioned it. Um. And he mentioned it to uh, David himself on Twitter. He wanted Joker to be the villain in the Suicide Squad. Um, or, or sorry, not the uh, Suicide Squad movie. And, you know, it's just a lot of things come into factors here um, when it comes down to like Warner Brothers, executives, corporate, uh, you know, all goes all the way back to the politics side, you know, corporate America. Um, it's corporate America, Warner Brothers, no doubt. And I felt it when I went there, too. It was just very, everything was very strict to the bone. It was very, you know, just um, very corporate level. You could feel in a sense, they could feel like there's a lot of, you know, a lot of big pieces moving. Um, But so going into this, you know, he did came out, uh, he did come out and say like, hey, I wanted Joker to be the villain, not Enchantress. It would have been a whole different movie if that was the case. I feel like the whole movie could have been different. I feel like the fans could have enjoyed it more. Um, If we got the Joker, I mean... (sighs) I know everyone dogs on me on bringing up uh, Jared Leto's Joker. I mean, what'd you, what'd you, uh, I don't think we talked about it on or off camera really too much, I but think we did. Um, what'd you think of Jared Leto's Joker, even though he was only in the film, like what, 10, 15 minutes, maybe. I mean, what- I was, I was upset as to how much airtime he got uh, just cause he was leading the marketing company. Yeah as to what the movie was going to be and the final product that we got. The fact that so many things that I could recall from the trailer were not in the movie uh, also yeah. pissed me off. And um, <laughs> But as far as Jared Leto himself, he is not, like by all means, my favorite or the perfect Joker. I think it's very hard to fit into that, into yeah. that spectrum of who your favorite Joker is, um, mm-hmm. especially – it's one of the not only iconic characters on paper, but even on film. Um, yeah. Now factoring Joaquin Phoenix, but even before Joaquin Phoenix, it was hard shoes to step into. Um, yeah, but he, his take was fresh. Uh, it was a different Joker than than what we knew from both comic books it hadn't been something that we've seen uh mm-hmm. and then for movies it definitely wasn't something that we had seen and so i was willing to be open to that but with how much little they gave us of jared yeah. leto's joker it it left a lot to be desired and it's one of the things those things where i don't i don't know if you come back from that um yeah i, I could agree to that um i mean obviously we he's not going to be in the suicide squad uh, James Gunn one uh, it just a lot of a lot of changes that a lot of people did not like his style of the Joker um, but let's let's put this into perspective um, it's not always the actor's fault I mean whether no. uh, yeah it's all always about the writing who took control and David even said it the director himself the one that's supposed to lead the charge the one that's supposed to be like all right we're doing it this way we're shooting at this camera angle we're going to shoot at this angle you know we're going to get this film on point i need you to be more serious i need you to be crying more i need you to be you know just all those mixed things that his direction that he is giving i felt like he wasn't even doing that on set i felt like he was doing that probably half the time and the other time was corporate people right behind him in suits just telling him what to do and all that stuff but then again we don't know we weren't on set we could speculate but let's go into the the facts that we know is that it's funny because whenever this came out i think this came out like a year or two or not it's probably longer than that but whenever uh the uh 
what do you call it? Whenever the suicide, uh, ugh, the, I keep saying the suicide squad. Cause it's like the, new, uh, whenever the suicide squad came out, like not even six months later, he came out and said, Oh, this isn't the movie I wanted. Like this isn't the, this. He, I wanted somebody else to be the villain and to know that happened. And then Warner Brothers didn't say nothing about it. That just shows like, Oh man, like, just like they didn't say nothing about, yeah. about his accusations. Um, but uh, yeah, I I'll, mean, I'll, I'll leave. It, yeah. He's also been advocated for his cut of the movie to be released. Uh, especially he's been trying to use some of the momentum that Snyder mm -hmm. cut got. I don't agree with his approach because it kind of sh sh like shines away from Snyder. Yeah. Cut. And it's kind of like, don't, don't ask for too much too soon. Like it, it probably yeah. took a lot for, for DC and Warner brothers to come to agreement to the Snyder cut. So like, I'm, I'm glad David is, trying to get his own vision together he's saying that his cut is 90 percent done but yeah. at the same time it it just depends like it, yeah warner brothers is going to be very careful as to how they allocate their resources into what projects is there a david i mean is there a i mean it's just one of those things that i mean he, 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 he shared a lot of pictures and he says there he says there is and, uh, i mean with with the whole corporate talk as far as that like there's no reason not to believe them they yeah. you know he, him in particular, I feel like he may be trying to oversell it versus Zack Snyder was always super careful. Uh, yeah, to, exactly. You know, he was transparent, but he was super careful. He'll just and tweet about it every now he and would, then. <laughs> yeah, he would share like one thing every like six months or whatever. David Ayer kind of ramped up that and it, he may be overselling it, right? So that's a problem. Yeah. But I also don't find a reason to not believe him knowing that you know the Snyder Cut clearly exists and yeah. the fact that Suicide Squad felt choppy as well there's no reason to believe there's a lot of stuff in the cutting room floor all right let's get right to it man let's get are uh, you ready for this trailer brother yeah man i'm ready i'm excited let's get, let's get right to it um so we haven't i haven't seen this trailer yet so it's gonna be a full-on spoiler uh if i am screaming i do apologize everybody or if i am nodding or just nodding my head getting mad upset i do apologize um it's just how the how i react um to, to stuff what, what are you drinking over there you drinking a beer what are you drinking Dr. Pepper. Oh, Dr. Is it spiked? Nah. nah. No. <laughs> no All right. Let's get right to it, man. All right. Let's see here. Let's see what he's got for us. All right. All the Animal City Movie Talk fans, hope you're ready for this, guys. Let's get right to it. All right. You heard of me? What have you heard? <laughs> I heard you're the devil. I might be. Ah, come on, fool. Good, eh? Every gang in LA has to pay their taxes. What's up, Holmes? Oh, shit. Go. If you stack short, go rob a bank, rob your own mother. There's no excuses. Do not test that. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa. Oh, snap. You guys look like a couple of monsters. Hey! Lopez. What's up, Johnny Cash? How about that time you gave me like three different STDs? Are you kidding? Me? Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. You got your wife, you got your kids, you got your castle. Daddy! I'm supposed to terrorize the herd. That's my function. God allows me to walk through the darkness and come back into the light. What did you see, me? I heard that you were this big bad gangster. You're taxing 43 different street gangs. That's thousands of dudes in the most violent subculture in Los Angeles. The count's short. Oh, who are you? I'm the future, and you the past. We got your kids. You want to buy them back? You don't think he wants to spill blood? He wants to cut your heart up. Can't run for what's left. I got a 380 on each ankle, 38 on my right, 25 on my left, chopper in the trunk, locking my belt. I'm on it. Oh, man. Yes. Took my kids, man. I'm riding with you till the wheels fall off. You're bad. You ain't that bad, all right? Shia LaBeouf. Dude. This looks Open cool. Open You splatter your brains out. I don't want that. I do. I want that. 
<laughs> oh man, dude. All right. Oh snap. Wow. Okay. Um, um, go go ahead, Lex. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying, like that. That looks good. I'm interested. Uh, it's interesting to see Shia LaBeouf. I, I think he's. I mean, he's he's Latino as well in the film, right? Um, I'm not. Uh, it just says his name's uh, on the cast list. He's actually just named Creeper. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, okay. So first off, I do want to mention. Um, let's uh, let's go ahead and start off with the tone, the way this you know the way this story is starting out. This trailer shows us already of what of amazing world David Eric has just come out with. I mean, this is written by him, directed by him. This is his story, his blood, his money. His hard-earned working money, drugs, everything. This is it, man. This is what he's hustling. I don't know. Maybe in another life, maybe he was actually this, all this. I mean, he likes doing these kind of weird style movies where yeah. it has these random acts of violence and justifies it and makes it into his own and brings that violence on screen. And we start caring for these characters. We start loving these characters and feeling bad for them. I mean, couldn't you agree more? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's possible. Definitely. I mean, all of his movies have this sort of theme, right? And I think, I think it's worked for him. It's a formula that works for him. And I think yeah. at the end of the day, like his films, uh, you know, even if you weren't a fan of Suicide Squad or whatever, like when you yeah. look at Training Day, End of Watch, you can tell it's made by the same person, but at the same time, they all feel like different movies. Different you're, movies, yeah. You're not seeing the same thing. And then to me in, partic in particular, the one that feels the most, uh, I don't want to say unique, but the most, uh, out of his usual formula, formula, it was Fury. Um, Dude, yes, and, and that because that brought you back to a war setting, which is different work to his yeah. usual films. And but but this kind this looks like a healthy mix of you know what war looks like yeah. on the streets, and and it's it's. I think he has a good cast in here. I, I was surprised to see George Lopez in there. Yeah, of, George Lopez. Um, I'm actually not. I mean, I don't want to say I'm not okay with George Lopez being in there. It is what it is. Um, but it's it's okay. I'll say that. I mean, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and give so much praise and so much hype for Shia LaBeouf, man. This mother has come out of nowhere. Last year, um, last year he came out with his uh his own movie of his yeah. life, and that movie, I don't know if you saw it, it's on Amazon Prime Dude, right now. I haven't seen it. I know I know it's in there and I've been meaning to watch it, but uh, it's uh Honey Boy, right? Honey Boy, yes. Um, dude, okay, so last year I reviewed both of these movies. Last year, Honey Boy was wow, bro. It's it's a it's a game changer for Shia LaBeouf. But that would even that would, I mean, if that wasn't a game changer, guess what other movie you could have seen? The Peanut Butter Falcon is just phenomenal. It's a great story that relies so much on the actor and uh, or the the co stars, you know, the leads. It it really dwells on them and they carry out the story because you're just following these three people and their adventures together. And it relies, like I said, the story just relies on them three, and it truly is phenomenal. It's great. Shia LaBeouf is just freaking amazing, man. I wish I could meet this guy. I really do, because this guy's just, I just want to say, bro, you're just art, man. You just, you really changed the game. And a lot of people are all like, oh, Shia LaBeouf's not a good actor. Hell no, he's a good, I would yeah. say he's a great actor. I would say, I would go as far as that, even though he hasn't won an Oscar, um, just because Fury showed how insane he can be. I mean, remember, I mean, I know you mentioned Fury, but dude, Fury was just, wow. Like Fury wow. was good. Um, yes. Yeah. I, I haven't seen, I, I haven't seen that other movie you referred to as well, the peanut butter Falcon. Yeah. But watching even the trailers themselves. Cause I remember seeing, watching the trailer of honey boy. Um, you, you can just tell he has that range. Uh, yeah. And, and in Fury, he really, he really showcased that, uh, but even in Fury, he was kind of playing like a like a young young kid, right, and mm -hmm. among the group and things like that. But here in the tax collector, he's he seems to be like this the seasoned veteran. He seems to know what he does. He he's been in the business for a while. Yeah. Um. And so it's kind of it's kind of cool to see that that grittiness to to an, to his transformation as I and I also think he looks like like skinny in this. Like he, yeah yeah. Probably, some weight for the role itself getting that slender yeah. look if you if you have prime you be you'll be able to watch honey boy for sure i know that, okay. that that's a prime movie um so if you do have amazon prime you'll be able to watch that like nothing and be sure to watch whenever you get a chance i mean it's it's a really great film 
Um, but yeah, so I, man, it just, it's really shaken me. This is the guy from transformers. This is Sam with, uh, with wiki. This with is wiki. him. Yeah. Like this is Sam. Like, it's just like, what? Like, this is the kid that was just in hose. This is the kid that was, you know, that was, uh, what was, what was the series called? Um, on Disney, uh, even Steve, uh, oh, ben Stevens. Yeah. Even Steven, this is the dude, like, this is the kid from that, from that show. And we yeah. see him grown up and it's just the way he's become as an actor and actress, I'm um, sorry, like an, an actor is really changed the game. And everyone's seen that meme. Everyone's seen that, you know, that one where he's like posing, do it, you know, just do it. You know, all that. Yeah. I mean, he's, yeah, like he's, he's well known. Everyone knows who he is. I would say, um, no, he's done a good job, in my opinion, to kind of step away from just being the Transformer skid, you know? Um, yeah. But for sure, I think as of recent years, he's been under... I know there was a time where he stepped away from acting for a bit. Um, yeah. I think he's been undergoing this transformation as to how to how to create an identity for himself as an actor. And I think he's picking good roles. And once again, I haven't, I haven't seen the most recent two, at least, from last yeah. year, but... But he's definitely seems to be yes. known, uh, as as someone who who wants to be um, taken seriously, and I, yeah. I actually really liked him. I don't know if you saw Lawless. Uh, with oh Tony yeah, Lee. oh bro, Dude, yes, I, <laughs> um, I love that yes. movie. It's so I, with Tom I, Tom um, Tom Hardy. Hardy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tom Hardy, yeah. I don't want to call it underrated, but not a lot of people ever saw that movie, and yeah. Um, it's it's an under it's an underrated movie though I I'll give you that because it's one of those things to where like it was it was just a lot of people did not really see it but they yeah. saw it when it came out on it's one of those movies to where like no one saw it in theaters because I didn't see it in theaters I saw Me it when it came out on on uh it was like on I think I saw or saw it on Netflix for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so like. It, it was one of those things to where like no one saw it in theaters and it just came out and everyone started talking about it word of mouth and we've seen movies like this storm uh uh oh my god meow what's uh troopers um super uh, uh super troopers yeah super troopers there you go like the first one no one you know no one it's one of those things to where like no one saw it in theaters that much and then when it came out on you know vhs or dvd um yeah. everyone started talking about it and it got became a popular movie you know it's one of those yeah. things um, and it does happen like that, and, and that's always good to see um, if it does get popular, whether whether it be either scenario. But I know uh, companies, franchise companies, they want it to be in the theaters <laughs> where it gets popular, for sure. It, it's still on Netflix, uh, so I highly recommend like anyone watching like to tune into that as well. Yeah, uh, you know, while you're waiting for this to come out in theaters and stuff. Yeah, uh, actually. Did, did they say when it's releasing? So there is no release date as okay. of right now. So I, I was actually looking that up while you, while you were talking. Um, so like there is no release date. It just says this year. Um, I am going to definitely see if I could find out. Because it did say in the beginning, I know that company, the FI, uh, L, uh, that, that production company. I'll probably email them and see if I can get an early review to, to see if I'm able to uh, review that film. Because, yeah, um, he's rocking. Okay, one thing that I really did love about him was his style i love the suit one yeah second i love the goatee the goatee does so much to his character because if you clean because he's always had that clean face right in all his movies you usually has like a clean face peanut butter factory kind of like eh, but it's pretty much like a, almost like a clean you know face like mine but the goatee really shows his dark side in in i guess you could say like a more aggressive side more adult side because every time i think of him as clean i think he's my age like it's just one of those things to where like it's just the way he looks you know he has a baby baby yeah. face i guess but with that goatee the sunglasses the shades the whole style of it was just i think david here just like you're gonna be a bad mother and you're gonna you're gonna do damage you're gonna you're gonna do chaos in this in my movie you yeah. know what i'm saying like it just and it won yeah so it was one of those things to where the, um they both probably saw eye to eye on that. Uh, so let's go to the cast real quick. Uh, Chelsea Ren, uh, Rendon's going to be in here as well. Um, she's also from Bright. So she's actually, she's uh, um, she plays Angie in Bright film. So she's actually known. So she's not a stranger from David. So knowing that, I was like, okay, cool. So she she's actually, oh, uh, let me see here. Oh, wow. Okay. So she's actually, hmm, she's actually a year younger than us. Oh, snap. Okay. All okay. Right. Yeah, that's cool. I know you mentioned um uh George Lopez. How do you feel George Lopez being here though? Like, I don't know. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? 
I mean, I don't mind it, man. Uh, it, it seems like he was playing a serious role, uh, right? I don't think he's like the comedic relief. He may bring that same charisma, but yeah, uh, I'm all for it, man. Uh, you know, he he definitely has his brand, you know, as, mm. as the George Lopez stuff. But at the same time, if the movie is taking, a, you know, it takes place at, or in a setting of, um, you know, the the Hispanic American side of Los Angeles, uh, yeah. I think I think George Lopez could have something to bring to the table. And once again, rather than using him as just comedic relief or something like that, yeah. I think he could just show us a little bit of his other side, right? Like, like mm-hmm. once again, um, I think a lot of the cast besides uh, Shia LaBeouf and um, George Lopez does seem to be fairly new people, right? Um, mm-hmm. Or like, you know, they haven't been like leads or they're not like huge names yet. Mm-hmm. So I think someone like George Lopez could just ground or, or uh, could just expand on the on the casting power, uh, even if he's just like a secondary role or something like that. So, uh, yeah. Not- and, and yeah, exactly. And and it, it comes down to it to where I just I love these type of movies. It almost feels like a Kurt Sutter film, almost in a sense to where, um, you know, Kurt Sutter from Sons of Anarchy. He's done um, Southpaw. Remember what John? Uh, Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal, yeah, yeah. South Paul, so like that. So he's wrote those. It almost feels like that, man. If it was like that, and I love that. I love movies like this where it talks about drugs, cartel, you know, all that stuff. Um, in this case, it doesn't. It, I don't know. It could be cartel. As far as the description goes, a tax collector for a crime lord finds his family safety, uh, comp- uh, we call it O's. Oh, oh, family safety compromised when his boss's old uh rival shows up in LA and up uh, upends his business. So it looks like competition as usual when it comes down to the drugs and everything. So yeah, yeah, and it, it also gave me a little bit of Sicario vibes. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially, especially the, the there's no Benicio, there's no Totoro at yeah. home, <laughs> like dude, but bro. That, gave, me, yeah. gave me those vibes just kind of like once again, um. Uh, Rather than involve, it doesn't seem like the government's involved in this, but it's all going to yeah. be the other side, the 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 cartel side. It seems. Yep. Uh, I'm really excited for this, man. It's it's a good trailer. Uh, it did what it needed to do. It caught yeah. our attention. It tells kind of what's happening, and uh, it it also looks fresh, right? You yeah. know, with a lot of movies, kind of like you know, surrounding this this theme. Um, I the fact that David Ayer is. Uh, uh spear or not not spearheading but he's leading the charge with this movie his particular tone his particular um vision i think it's super exciting yeah most definitely man i can't wait to see this film uh because you agree more give a thumbs up to this trailer man i'm 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 yeah. hyped up I, i'm ready you know i'm ready to get my gun and start shooting stuff i'm ready i'm <laughs> down are you down you're gonna bring out <laughs> let's, just, let's just go start shooting our guns in the air <laughs> totally not safe <laughs> all right all right, guys. Well, hopefully everyone's staying safe out there with COVID-19. Hopefully everyone, uh, you know, doing social distancing, wearing a mask, please do with everything that's going on. And yeah, guys, so I just want to keep you on the loop that we will actually be doing contests later this year. I, I've, I've been with everything going on, you know, it's everyone you know, with everyone's, uh, um, how do you say, like the business side of it, movies is really like getting pushed back towards the end of the year. But I do promise we're going to do a giveaway later this year, guys um and yeah so i mean keep liking us on facebook uh subscribe to us on youtube i got also ladies and gentlemen more youtube stuff coming out which is going to be more vlogs about um mainly me and my wife it's gonna be me and my wife doing adventures and stuff with with what's going on and everything so hopefully everyone stay tuned to that and also lex what is the podcast that you are on buddy tell us we are over at uh, not in theaters uh we haven't released any new episodes um you know my co-host josh and myself we're trying to get together and figure out you know it's a lot of things happening you know he recently yeah. had uh um a beautiful kid and he has his awesome. family all that stuff and so with with covid and stuff we just want to make sure everyone is yeah. safe congrats uh, <laughs> yeah and but, but at the same time you know with our focus and movies even though we typically do movies that are not in theaters and it's hypothetical, <laughs> yeah. it's still hard to kind of have fresh ideas on board especially yeah. with like our warm-up but not in theaters uh a what if series is the name of it uh you can find it by just searching not in theaters we're on spotify apple podcast uh google play uh stitcher uh and uh we we are essentially under the uh podcasting network of delphin pod so yeah. 
participated on other podcasts of theirs and uh it's just a great community and they introduced me to this world of podcasting so uh if you guys yeah, are man. interested in any movies that don't exist and and they're hypothetical and we do fan casting uh for sure check it out i think you guys would have a, lo a lot of fun and we have a catalog of about 24 21 episodes so even awesome. though um even though there's no new content just yet uh we have a large catalog so far it's coming though right it's coming yeah no for sure we're gonna be <laughs> awesome. back better yeah. than ever yeah, awesome, man. I know, uh, I know Emmanuel over there at, at Delphin Pod. I know he has, uh, yeah, he's he's pushing and gunning. Awesome, Emmanuel. If you're watching, man, you know you have great content out there. If you uh, any Star Wars fans, be sure to listen to their podcast as well. They have a great podcast, which is under the Delphin Pod umbrella. Which they also do uh, countdown to infinity. If I'm, yeah. if I'm right, okay, yeah. So countdown to infinity, and then they have their Star Wars stuff, which I was a special guest along. Uh, I think last year in November, December. I was a special guest on there and it, it's really great community, great podcasters, great group of guys. And yeah, man, that, uh, once again, Lex, thank you for being on the show, man. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to make you part of this. You're going to be part of this group already, man. All right. We're going to make, I know me and you, we, you know, we do this and then we do the, um, with our, uh, our, with our better halves, we do, um, uh, the Disney podcast. So yeah. So no, it's a lot of fun, man. Thank you for having me over and, uh, uh, I'll be happy to come back, you know, and, and I'm so excited to watch this movie for sure yeah most definitely brother all right well hopefully everyone's having a good day and happy fourth if we do not see you ladies and gentlemen be sure to stay safe once again and social distance and yeah happy fourth happy independence lex by the way you too brother. Bye, everyone. yeah man <laughs> have a good one guys wake up, wake up.